And I, I was just like I had wings. I went down that aisle and, and of course, Brother Harvey, he uh, welcomed me in the church and all that. And that was the beginning that I can remember. Do you remember if you were baptized <coughs> in a in in the church or in a river? In the in church. In the church. We so had you a had, baptistry. You oh, had a baptistry. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. And of course, Mom, when she come through the line, you know, I had to shake hand. Mom, she was just crying. Uh -huh. Yeah, but see, my brother, he, he had already joined several years before me, and so that's where we got our start. Was right playing that church, and I went back a um, year, a couple of years ago to my church and it was a hundred years old and uh, it's, it's still there in its current form no they took they had to tear the old one down it was got where we got bad shape and that's when we went to the new brick church mm -hmm. and that's where they had the celebration of a hundred years but i saw generations of people that i had known all my life and i took my granddaughter krista with me and she was amazed at all the people that I knew. I said, well, Chris, I grew up with these people. And we all, everybody come that could, that could get there from all over the United States. Mm -hmm. And of course, all the men loved my neck. And my granddaughter was amazed at that. She said, Granny, all these men are just loving on you. And when we get back to how I said, I'm gonna tell Granddad. <laughs> I'm gonna tell on you. I said, well, you just tell on me, I says, these are all just family friends. That's right. She said, no, they were your boyfriends. I said, I could never have had that many boyfriends. <laughs> and first thing out of Crystal's mouth when we got back to Hawaii with Granddaddy, I got something I want to tell you. And she told <laughs> that story on me. Because I knew she was going to do that. Sure. She's but good at that. She, she, she just loved to tell it. She thinks that's the funniest thing. And every once in a while she brings up this story about when we went down there. But we had a grand, we had a good time. In 1961, <coughs> when our family uh, settled in St. Petersburg on the south side of town, mm -hmm. um, what provided the, the want to get into church at that time? Well, actually, um, actually, we moved in our house in November of 59. But like you said, we didn't get regular in the church until 61. But we had two neighbors that encouraged us to go was uh, Cherry Rich and Hazel, um, what's their last name? Well, they lived across the street from each other, but those two, Hazel lived, they got us interested in the church and they kept saying, we said we were looking for a church. And they said, well, we've got a great church going over on, on Lake McCoy's. It's, uh, come, it's right, on, right up from the lake and says, you'll see it. And that's how we got started there. We were supposed to go to that church. Now, we had lived on the north side of St. Pete, but we never could. We went to churches up there, but we never could find one that we felt at home at. And we, I think we were led, and we were, I wanted us to get into a house. And it was like pulling front teeth for Granddad to get into a house. He didn't want to do that, because he had a nice big trailer and a room and everything, and it was all paid for, and he didn't want to do that. So, But I talked him into that, which was good that we did and we wanted to give uh, our boys the home life that they needed and so I we did that but that that house has paid for itself many times in fact we bought property up here with it see so it was a good investment and uh, some of the greatest times that we all had were right there in that area on C. Robin Drive on Cooking Key and it laid me for a bad to some of the happiest days of our life. We we still enjoy we go back and see a lot of old friends that are left there. We still play cribbage and go out and eat with them yeah. and see everybody we and we know. And it's great to, to summer in the mountains and winter in in, in Florida. This is June of 92, mm -hmm. and you are 68 years old. 68. And your birthday is in January. Mm -hmm. January... 13. I was going to say 14, but I always miss it by a day. Mm -hmm. January 13th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I'd, I'd like to do you like I just did Dad. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if you could say anything you would want to say to a generation of children out there that you may never know, 
but give them a legacy of yourself. Mm -hmm. Tell them wisdom that you've learned, uh, whatever. But say something to them that um, they could carry with them as they grow up and go on and have their own children. Well, I, I would say uh, very much what Granddad said earlier, that they definitely should get all the schooling they could and definitely find them a church and a church home and uh, stay in the church. Uh, there'll be good and bad times, but never, never leave the church. And because if you stay in the church and uh, you grow up in the church, like I did, and, and very similar to what you did, mm -hmm. you you will never leave it. You'll always still go back to it. And uh, I just feel I can have uh, good family relationships and ne never leave your family members and, and just live a, a good, clean life. Is it easy to have a family relationship? No, it's not all the time. Does it take work? It takes work. You have to overlook a lot of things that are said and done. You have to have a lot of patience. And you have to uh, uh, always keep love there. Always have love. And uh, I think love and patience is one of the two of the greatest things you can have. And you, you have to have all of this to hold your family together. And if some kind of get out of fellowship, it's your place to get them straightened out and get them back into fellowship with each other. And when you're around your family members, they say things you don't like, you just kind of pass it up and say, oh, well, that, that will come to pass and that'll straighten out, you know. And uh, you just have to go on. But always go to see them and get along with them because you won't be together forever. You know, I find myself... Uh, as I'm talking with other people about relationships, families, that invariably I will repeat something that you have told me. Mm -hmm. And it's usually one of those short little wisdom statements that you always were using on us as boys. Mm -hmm. uh, that that it, it was your uh, understanding of human relationships that uh, really has taught me a lot about how to deal with others, how to treat others. And that's not to uh, really I'm not saying anything against Granddaddy, but it, you you have a way of saying wisdom mm -hmm. in a short, easy sentence that I can remember. Well, you see, I, I, was, I think I was given that. Yeah. Now, I learned, my mother was like that. She would say things that would help you to think, see. Right. And she was good at teaching you things very, very calmly better than my daddy because uh, you're supposed to get it first time around with him, you know. Although my daddy basically was a good Christian man. And he did at one time want to go to the ministry and, and want to study and become a minister. And my mother wouldn't leave her little area of Pinehurst and go with him to New Orleans and so he never became one and she often regretted not going with him. Which uh, I'm sure he was made a good minister in his time and his life would have been different. Mm -hmm. But um, that, that that's given to me, and um, I found that I've had people tell me a lot of times I say things to them that's helped them, and I don't even know I've done that. Yes. yes. And um, I have this happen right over here in the church, and I had a lady from, from St. Petersburg, and she was kind of upset by her husband wanting to stay up here some, and she wanted to stay down there with her children. And it is hard on some women. And... Uh, I said something to her that day. I don't even remember what I said. And she told me much later how I had helped her that Sunday just sitting by her in the church and talking to her because she was emotionally upset. And I, I think I may have told her that the Lord would take care of it and, you know, things like that. And uh, Those are the kind of sayings she uses, exactly uh -huh. <laughs> like that. Just the Lord will take care of this. Right. But He does. He you does know. all the time. You know that. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> But the thing about it is, this lady says, and you know what you said? It come out like that. And it surprised me, because see, I didn't even think about what I was just trying to comfort her. Right. right. But I got her over it. Now she's perfectly satisfied. They stay up here some, and they go back to St. Pete's. So, so, and the heat, so that got worked out for her. But you, uh, as I say, the greatest thing to have is patience. And you have to learn to have patience. 
and, I, and also you must always have Christ in, in you.